Hello everyone, my name is Nick and it's the end of the year, the end of 2019, and this has been a really incredible year for houseplant enthusiasts. There has been so many new plants that have shown up on the scene, and I can certainly speak as a buyer that there has been plenty more plants available for me to sell in the store where I work than there was in the year prior. So I kind of just wanted to take a moment to summarize the year in plants, if you will. So I wanted to focus in on the plants that I would consider to be the best plant purchases that I have personally made in 2019. So as I said, there has been so many new plants that have popped up on the market so whether I've gotten them in the store where I work or I walked into another plant store and stumbled upon these plants uh, they really have taken the cake for me as far as the you know top plants for me as far as the ones that I have personally bought in 2019 specifically focusing on ones that I would consider to be perhaps newer this year so I am gonna actually try to focus in as well on where I purchased these plants and how much I paid for them which is something I don't think I typically do so the first one I'm gonna talk about today is this Ashkenanthus longicollis which I think sometimes people People refer to as the black pagoda lipstick plant and this is a really really beautiful lipstick plant if you uh, grow lipstick plants in your home you're probably more familiar with the standard lipstick plant which is just standard green leaves that look a little bit Hoya-esque and they flower some red flowers uh, but this lipstick plant I think is a little bit more heavy on the foliage in terms of beauty uh, the top of the foliage has some really nice patterns but if we flip it over it's got these really beautiful uh, purple undersides to the leaves and I think that really stands out. So I take care to put this plant up high because I think it's a really wonderful plant to see from down below. So as this is called a lipstick plant, lipstick plant usually refers to the flowers that are shaped like lipstick, they say. So this one I have here is actually in bloom. Uh, the flowers on this uh, particular lipstick plant I think are a little bit less spectacular than some of the other ones that um, are on the market or that I grow in my home, but they are still quite wonderful uh, if you pay attention to them they just definitely don't stand out as much as some of the other ones but this plant I really had been uh, after for a few years and it wasn't until earlier this year where I finally stumbled upon it I was at a farmers market local to me here in Philadelphia and uh, they had this plant that they were selling you know these exact plants and they were four dollars so I was so excited I ended up getting one of them and within a month I ended up going back and getting another one because I was so thrilled about how it looked in my home and I just couldn't pass up an offer like that so I was really really thrilled to find this plant at such a low price this is definitely one of the best plant purchases that I have made this year both of them this is just one of the two that I purchased so the next one that I want to talk about today is a peperomia so if you follow me on Instagram or YouTube you probably know that I collect peperomia I think they're just so phenomenal ever since I've become a buyer at a plant store I started to notice how many different varieties there are and there's just always a new one out there and you just never know what you're gonna find so this one right here is a peperomia kimnachii now this one is a I would say it's not necessarily like rare by any means it's just not in cultivation uh, specifically in the United States so it's just a little bit more harder to come by in the United States that's definitely much more readily available in Europe and European countries so this one right here I had been kind of after for a little bit I actually have a few other ones in my home that I gotten smaller over the course of this year uh, but just a few months ago my friend Linda was up in Massachusetts I believe she was at a, a nursery called Mahoney's and they had these large hanging baskets of peperomia kanachi eye there for only I believe $18 so she was kind enough to reach out to me and say hey uh, do you want one of these I think you might want one of these and I was like yes <laughs> so she was very kind enough to travel with this plant and bring it back for me so I'm so excited about this plant it's so beautiful and I definitely feel like I have to like plant up my other ones that I have in my home together to kind of make it feel even more something like this because they're just single plants in the pot and this is just like I don't know like 10 of them so I'm um, I'm very, very excited about this plant. I, for a peperomia collector, this was definitely something that I could not pass up. I totally talked about this next plant in my last video, but I do want to talk about it again real quick because it totally fits into this category. But this is my new Philodendron Imbi Variegata, and I just recently got this plant from Pepper's Greenhouse by mail order, so I ordered it from their website's Accents for Home and Garden. And when I was recently visiting Pepper's Greenhouse, I did tell this story in my last video, but I'm just going to briefly tell it again. When I was visiting Pepper's Greenhouse recently, the owner could tell I liked plants, and he was like, I want to show you a plant. It's not for sale right now, but um, it's really cool. You're going to love it. And it was one of these. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Uh, what are you selling them for when you are selling it? And he said, $25. I was like, 
that is a deal. So I made a note right then and there to check their website periodically. And earlier this month, they had them in stock. So without missing a beat, I went ahead and placed an order and this is the plant I got. It had a new leaf coming in at the time and this is that new leaf right here and it looks beautiful and I'm just so thrilled about this plant. This was such a great way to end the year on, such a great note. And then I also wanna talk about this Hoya. So this is a Hoya Abavada. If you watched my top five Hoya video, you probably expected to see this plant on this video. Uh, this Hoya Abavada I got from my work Urban Jungle in Philadelphia, where I am the, the curator or the buyer, whatever you want to refer to me as. And I was super excited when I got these in stock. I was selling them for $30, I think it was $29 or $30, uh, in hanging baskets, and they were very full hanging baskets. Of course, I mean, if we're being real, you guys probably assume that I get a discount for working there, so I didn't pay quite $30, but um, this plant was just so beautiful. It's so full, I could not turn down this plant, and I was actually just so excited to get them in because it was on my wish list at the time. So this one has grown quite well for me. I have quite a bit of new growth going on right over in this area, and you can see uh, this vine is just starting to get some new growth on it as well. I have actually cut this plant back a little bit to share with friends, so it is recovering from that pretty well. But yeah, I'm just so obsessed with the look of this uh, plant. The leaves are just so large and round. It's a very succulent plant. It's very easy going. It doesn't require water that often, although it does need water. I'm very happy that I pulled it off for this video because I can tell that this plant is definitely in need of water. The leaves are a little bit lackluster compared to how it normally looks, so I should give it some water and then it should park back up a little bit more over the next uh, few days, but it's definitely not in bad condition whatsoever. Uh, I definitely just could have watered it a few days ago, that is for certain. I tend to avoid bringing my larger plants into my videos for this exact reason, but this is my Thematophyllum sprucianum. Thematophyllums are very closely related to philodendrons. They are aeroids. In fact, they used to be referred to as philodendrons up until, I believe, last year. Uh, they used to be in a subgenus referred to as Meconostigma, and now they are an entirely different genus referred to as Thematophyllum. So one of the most common Thematophyllums would be Thematophyllum bipinatifidum, which is commonly referred to as the philodendron celloum, or sometimes called a tree philodendron, so just so you can have a little bit of reference. But this philodendron, or Thematophyllum, has some really wild fingery leaves. I'll definitely give you guys some shots otherwise so you can see what I'm talking about since I can't exactly get this in the frame. But this plant just has some really remarkable foliage. It's very much unlike many other of the aeroids that I grow in my home. So that's kind of why I was gravitating towards it. Um, I believe I saw this plant on NSC Tropicals like two or three years ago and I was just like, that is so cool. And I always eyed it up. I remember seeing it like, you know, botanical gardens and stuff. And it wasn't until earlier this year when one of the local plant stores in Philadelphia called City Planter actually got these in stock and they were selling them for only $35. I remember calling them in the morning being like how much are you selling them for and they told me and I was like are you serious and I hope they didn't take it the other way of me being like that's so expensive because I was like that's a deal. I'll pay for one on the phone if you would like me to um, but yeah they were just so gorgeous. I was so obsessed with them when I had saw that they got them in stock and uh, it was a good day for me so <laughs> and the uber ride was pretty wild getting one of these home especially because my friend also got one as well so we had two of these giant plants in an uber uh but yeah this plant's just so incredible it hasn't really done much of anything for me this is the new leaf that i am waiting to unfurl it's actually got a little bit of progress that has uh happened already but i'm still waiting for the majority of the rest of the progress to happen so Hopefully this plant is going to keep on chugging for me. Uh, we are in the winter months now, so it's probably not going to do very much, but I am hoping that uh, by the springtime or even by the summertime that this plant is pushing out some new leaves for me, which I think would be just really, really incredible to see. My next best plant purchase of 2019 would have to be my Deschidia russifolia. Now, Deschidias and Hoyas are in the same family, and I would say hand in hand, these two genus have been getting a lot of popularity over the last year. Deschidia russifolia in particular has definitely been one of the Deschidias that has been gaining a lot of traction. Now, this plant is harder to get in larger pots, which is kind of why it's a little bit closer to my heart. You definitely can find these in smaller pots or get them by cuttings, but they're definitely not readily available in larger pots. And according to my grower, that is because that these plants are just very, very slow growing. Now, I actually had gotten this because that same grower had found a few of these in hanging baskets in just the back corner of one of the greenhouses, and they weren't going to cultivate them because they were very slow growing, so they decided to sell them off to the buyers. And I was fortunate enough to get my hands on 
one of them. So I was actually able to get this for only $10 since it was straight from the greenhouse. But this plant is a very slow grower. It definitely lives up to that name, but um, you can see that it has had some new growth coming in for me. Uh, but you can also see that the plant when I got it in wasn't necessarily in the best condition, but it's definitely been growing out. You know, you give a plant some love and it gives you some love back. This plant has also flowered for me quite a bit. However, the flowers on this plant are, they're very, very small. So I have probably missed more flowers on this plant than I've actually seen, which is a little depressing. But uh, yeah, it's been really a wonderful plant to grow. If you can get your hands on this and if you can find it in a larger pot, you're definitely really, really lucky. But uh, yeah, if you can get your hands on this plant, it's definitely a really fun one to grow. I can see why it's been really gaining popularity over the last year. And another one that I am really fond of that I have gotten this year is this Syndapsis trubii Moonlight. So if you recall earlier this year, I was on the hunt for Syndapsis trubii Dark Form, which is just a black leaved version of this plant. But while I was on my hunt, uh, I my eyes were opened up to this version of Syndapsis trubii referred to as Moonlight that has some of these like lighter markings to the leaf that is quite nice. So this plant wasn't necessarily inexpensive. This plant did cost $75 and I got it from NSC Tropicals. However, the reason why I was willing to shell out a little bit of extra money on this plant is that you don't normally see this plant on in such a large abundance. It's normally sold like by the four inch pot and it's usually, you know, roughly 40, 45 dollars, maybe even 50. In the United States, I know it's cheaper um, in different areas of the world, but in the United States, this is definitely a harder plant to get your hands on. So finding this in such a large abundance, as I had said, uh, was definitely really exciting and was something I could not pass up on. So I was really, really thrilled about this. It is definitely a slower grower. I have gotten some new growth coming in on the top here, as you can see, but I have had it for two or three months now, and compared to my Syndapsis pick this, that is definitely the, the winner in terms of fast growth in the Syndapsis genus. Very similar to that Syndapsis trubii Moonlight is this Monstera Peru that I also have growing on a moss pole, as you can see. I actually believe that this plant and the Syndapsis are grown out by the same grower in Florida, if I am not mistaken, but I just really was enamored by this plant when we got them in stock. It actually just happened by chance that I was able to get them in stock at the store where I work. I had an order coming in from my, my plant broker and she just magically got her hands on these and was able to send a box along with my order. So I was super thrilled and of course I had to bring one home with me. Uh, I don't normally see this plant in this abundance, just as I had said for the Syndapsis trubii, which is why I'm very fond of the plants that this particular grower grows out, because they are just so large when they come in stock, and they're really hard to find plants, so that is just something that I'm very fond of. I have to admit, though, I've actually been struggling a little bit with some thrips with this plant. So thrips are a type of plant pest. If you have dealt with thrips or if you're just dealing with thrips for the first time, it really does feel like an endless battle when you are first dealing with them. Uh, but the more you get accustomed to dealing with them, you learn uh, ways to get rid of them and deal with them. Particularly, I use my spray, Captain Jack's, or not my spray, but the spray that I use is Captain Jack's. And then I often will bring in beneficial insects into my home usually twice a year uh, to get rid of the pest and I think that works phenomenally well however as it's the winter months I'm probably gonna hold off from bringing any beneficial insects so I'm gonna stick to the Captain Jack spray in this instance it's really grown phenomenally for me since I brought it home you can see all these trailing vines all over the place that has completely outgrown the moss pole that it came into me on I could have extended it and had it go up a little bit more but I just kind of like the way it looks and as it's a little bit more wild and I actually have one more plant that I would consider to be uh, one of the best plant purchases that I've had for this year, 2019, and it is this Peperomia Ruby Cascade. Now, this thing is a monster, and I have to say, I bought this very, very small, and this is actually the second one I ever purchased. So I believe last year I got my first Ruby Cascade from one of my favorite growers, and I just bought a super, super small pot. I think I got two of them and shoved them together, and it grew very, very quickly. It was in a south-facing window, so in my hemisphere, south-facing windows are very, very bright, intense light, and it was a little too intense for this plant, so as the plant grew, it got a little yellow and ugly looking up top, and it kept its foliage really nice looking at the bottom, but I was just not really fond of it. So fortunately enough, as these plants are not exactly easy to get your hands on, I was at a local big box store and they actually had one of these in their succulent selection. And I think it was only like five or six dollars. So I went ahead and purchased it knowing what it could be and I have since grown it out and I am just absolutely thrilled with the way this looks. I 
was growing it in a western facing window but I have since moved it into my bedroom just a few feet back from a south facing window and I find that this plant has just really, really enjoyed the care that I've given it. I am uh, definitely not helicopter parenting this plant. I am certainly letting this plant dry out. That is a very, very big must for this plant. I would say if you water this plant too much, I would really find it rotting very, very quickly. So you want to be hands off. In fact, I can usually tell um, with my taco test, which I call it when I fold the leaves like I'm trying to fold them up like a taco, um, this plant's leaves will have a lot of give to them. Uh, when it needs water and when they are not in need of water, they will be totally succulent. So this plant to me is kind of like my new string of hearts. So if you have been following me for a while, uh, Serapegia woodii or string of hearts was definitely a plant that really had my attention for a number of years. But I'd say this one has really been kind of uh, running ahead a little bit, kind of becoming the front runner uh, in terms of my like favorite trailing plants. This one just really has such a vibe and I'm, I'm really loving all the red color. You can see if I flip this plant to the back that it's it's completely red on the back. Some of the leaves are facing you guys, but um, yeah, a really, really incredible plant. It's flowering pretty profusely. And one thing about this plant too that I should mention is I find it naturally variegates itself very, very easily. So I find if you buy one of these plants, you wouldn't be surprised to find that some of these vines might suddenly start to be variegated, which I think is very, very interesting. You don't find many plants that do that. So for that reason and many, many others, this plant is just such a phenomenal plant and I would definitely consider it one of the best plant purchases that I have had all year. That's gonna about do it for 2019. So it's been such an incredible year for houseplants and as houseplant enthusiasts, there has been so many incredible houseplants that have shown up in the last year. However, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what 2020 and the new decade has for us on the horizon. So on that note, I do wanna wish everybody a happy new year and a happy holiday. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video and in the new year. Have a great time.